fellow watch enthusiasts, I have some bad news for you. Uh, my blog, uh, Manly Watches, part of the Herculage Enterprise, uh, I don't even know if it can exist anymore because look what's for sale. This is the Benares Megalodon. It's 49 millimeters, but let me tell you, with the thickness and with those giant loom markers, the whole package, it plays like a 52, 55 millimeter uh, watch on the wrist. This thing is huge, it's heavy, and I want to tell you something. Two, three years ago, this would have been the ultimate holy grail of the manly watch, and it's for sale. And just looking at it, I may take it off for sale. No, I, it's for sale. Uh, and it leads me to the question I have today. What is the state of giant oversized watches? Uh, those, in fact, are the watches that, that captured my attention back in 2007, 2008, 2009, maybe. Starting off with, this was the Poison right here back around 2007 or so. I got the Echozilla which is uh, really got me completely obsessed with big watches. I was wondering why when people were giving me watches back in the mid and early 2000s, late 90s, why I didn't wear them. And I think I didn't wear them because they were about 38 millimeters, maybe 40. And honestly, you know, I'm about six feet, 235 pounds or so. A 38 millimeter watch on me looks like a woman's watch. And so these watches people were giving me, they were just going in my drawer. And um, when I walked into a, a watch store around 2007 or so, when I saw this Echozilla, it's like a switch turned on, a light switch. And after getting this, I uh, started getting Invictas. And uh, as you know, if you like Invicta watches, the arsenal, you, you can go up to 60 millimeter watches plus. And so my aesthetic was just this big, giant, manly watch with huge loom markers on it. This, you were, you were at the top of your game right here. And now, I'm committing an act of blasphemy and sacrilege. I've put this for sale. Something has obviously happened. Obviously, my tastes have evolved. And I wanted to talk about the state of the large watch uh, in this uh Vlog, and I want to thank Johnny Casual over at Johnny Casual uh, Enterprises uh, for doing this. Uh, he told me, you know, blogs are kind of passe; they're kind of dead. Maybe, maybe exercise watches are dead too. So I'm trying this essay format in video form. Don't have the comfort of the this new venue that Johnny has. He's very comfortable in the format, and I'm not. But um, I wanted to go over perhaps seven or eight reasons why I think. Big watches are no longer part of my, uh, when I say big, I mean, I'm not excluding, you know, things that are 48 millimeters like the Seiko Fieldmaster. This is perfect on my wrist. I just think there's a certain point now in my life where I can go from, four, you know, a smaller, lighter watch is a little more reasonable for me, and I wanted to discuss that. Um... I think I want to first point out that if you love big watches, don't expect me to judge you or scorn you or have contempt for you. I don't believe in one size fits all styling of watches. People can wear whatever they want. Uh, I don't like people telling me what to wear, and, and I don't. I'm not so arrogant to think that I have some watch dogma that I'm going to impose on people. I notice there's a lot of uh, watch enthusiasts who like to think they're so right about their watch tastes and their watch knowledge doesn't turn me on much. Uh, so you wear whatever you want. I'm not judging you. And, and my God, I used to wear the Invicta Sea Hunter and uh, the uh, the Invicta, what was it called? Oh, the Leviathan. I used to wear those things with pride. And uh, I don't even own any Invictas right now. Clearly, my watch tastes have changed. And uh, the first reason I think we, uh, or, or my own personal aesthetic is getting a little smaller is I'm over the peacock feather effect. I would call the peacock feather effect is you, you buy a watch so that when you walk into a room, that watch is so big that you are the biggest peacock in the room and everyone's staring at you. And you have the biggest muscles in the room. And uh, let's look at the Seiko SRP 307. It's big and bold and it's, it's 47.5. 
I'm big enough with this. I, I don't need to go uh, much bigger than that. And I've kind of outgrown the peacock effect. And I, I want to say that it, as you begin to explore watches and, uh, and appreciate their detail, I don't think you need the peacock effect anymore. I think you're looking at uh, more detailed things. And so that's the, the first thing I wanted to say about pr my own personal uh, moving away from the really big watches. The second thing I wanted to say, I just feel that the trend, the fad, the pendulum is going a little bit uh, away from 55, 60 millimeters. I mean, I remember in 2008 seeing the U-boats uh, at uh, close to 60 millimeters. You know, with a crown, you can go over 60. And I, I think the big celebrity glam oversized watch, that fad, I think it must have peaked out around, what, 2011, 2012? I think it's peaking out. And... Uh, the, th the third reason that I'm getting away from big watches is that I, I want to tell you, it used to be a matter of pride for me to wear a heavy watch. It was part of my manliness, right? Well, you know, I've got these two uh, Citizen Promaster Sky watches. I've got one in silver, and these are uh, close to 45 millimeters. It depends on how you measure it. You could say they're 44. They are so detailed, and they have such wonderful uh, wrist presence that they really... Uh, made me rethink what a watch needs to look like on my wrist. I don't even know if you're going to be able to see the black one in the light. Uh, but wearing titanium has really spoiled me. The uh, the uh, the comfort is just so nice, and uh, and not just that, but just the detail has really spoiled me. It's made me rethink uh, what I want in terms of wrist presence. Uh, on a watch and so uh, wearing titanium watches that's the third thing that's taken me away from the really 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 big watches and uh, the other thing I, I think I mentioned this earlier as you uh, develop your watch uh, enthusiasm you begin to look at detail more than you look at just pure size so the detail on the Seiko Fieldmaster the chronograph is, is very impressive to me. I mean, this plays like a 46 millimeter on the wrist. I mean, it's advertised as a 48 millimeter watch, but um, it's big enough, it's bold enough, it's detailed enough and unique enough. And I, I love it on the uh, Shark Mesh. That's an aftermarket Shark Mesh I got from Strap Code. And I think if you see these corrugations on the edge of the bezel, I don't know if you can see them, I, they match the mesh. And so the mesh ended up being the perfect complement for it. I tried it on a Super Engineer, and while it looked good on the Super Engineer, the mesh really brought it out, the, the detail of this watch. This is just a, a classic, and man, the price has gone down. These were 500 bucks a year ago. I think you can find them brand new on eBay for 380 370 360 It's ridiculous. They come on a rubber strap in stock. So uh, number four, just my appreciation for detail. Has come up. Uh, the other thing I wanted to say is, is um, when it comes to confidence on the wrist, you know, I, I guess when I started out not knowing that much about watches, to me, confidence was just a big watch, and now it, it's my understanding and appreciation of quality uh, over size. So that's the fifth thing that's got me away from big watches. Here's the sixth big thing. You can go to the shopping mall and they have watch kiosks and you can go to Target and Walmart and you can see thousands of 55 millimeter watches for 20 bucks and they're hideous and that's kind of turned me off uh, from having a big watch. Uh, the seventh uh, force that's kind of got me off the really, really oversized watches is um, age appropriateness. I'm 53, I'll be 54 at the end of October. I'm not sure I want to rock a 60 millimeter watch or, or just this oversized uh, fab glam watch. I'm, I'm kind of moving away from that. And who knows, maybe I would be wearing something like the uh, Megalodon if I was 25 and single. Uh, but uh, I'm going to sell it. I, I'm probably going to get a Citizen Grand Touring, either Blue Dial or get my old charcoal one again after I sell that thing. Uh, and finally, I, I, I know this sounds funny, but it's actually true. Uh, the doorknob effect. I swear to God, I've worn some big watches in my time, 
And they're like magnets for hitting into doorknobs. And they're just not that functional, really. And I, I, don't, I don't know what that's uh, all about. But man, do I find those doorknobs and other things. So I think looking at those eight things would explain why, why I'm getting away from the really oversized watches. And it's kind of ironic. This, this blog, Herculage, started off with the subcategory manly watches. Well, my definition of a manly watch has changed. And uh, I will talk to you guys later.